Welcome to Rex Corner. I have a good friend of mine, Vinny Cesare, back, who's a very talented man. Oh my God, he does so many things. I mean, he was into the old school bodybuilding. He's a martial arts, uh, best beyond martial arts. Uh, master of Jiu Jitsu. Master of Jiu Jitsu, you can stand up comic. Stand up comic. Uh, an actor <laughs> with uh, national commercials. Mm -hmm. And the list goes on and on and on. We're going to touch on a lot of these subjects. But we've talked about, he's been on the show before, and we've talked about certain things. Um, First of all, the first thing we ever talked about was bodybuilding because you like the old school method. Indeed, indeed. I think the old school method, anything is better. You know, it's the original way. I think that uh, I used to read about you in the magazines and, you know, you and Arnold and, yeah. and, and Lou and, and, you know, I dreamed of coming, being, work, training at Gold's, coming to California when I was a kid. I'd see them in the magazines and then boom, now you're training with these guys. And yeah, I like know you are awful people. But let me ask you a question. How did you get into stand-up comedy? That's kind of so remote from what I, you do. I started stand up at like 17 years old. Did you? Yeah. Did you find it difficult? You know, uh, I believe that people say it's the hardest thing in the world to do, but I find it invigorating, challenging. I love it to death. I mean, you just get up there and you just... If you're a natural. Throw it out there. Yeah, when you're a natural, you're a natural at it too. It just comes. I'm very good at working with people in an audience and doing comedy. I mean, I can sit in a room and have everybody laughing and then standing up and doing it. I don't know if I could or not. I would like to try it someday, but I think I could probably do it. From wrestling, you know, working with an audience, you can you work a crowd. Sure. But, you know, I, we met really, I think it was just before Dragon Fest, mm -hmm. which they don't That's have correct. anymore. And um, Darren McBee was up with us. And Darren just just actually painted a picture of me, which is actually beautiful. It's on Facebook. He's going to send it to me. But I remember you showing some demonstrations. And I think you grabbed Darren's thumb and you kept three guys away from you. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is like really cool. How do you do that? My God, you made it look so easy. Yeah. So a lot the, of practice. Is it is a lot of practice? Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. I think what it was was the Jew first time uh, somebody's been exposed to Japanese finger locking tactics or Japanese kubitori, as we say. Well, when you do that, for example, I mean. You, a guy on the street wants to use this kind of stuff, for example. Sure. You've got to really know where to grab. Indeed. It, it, well, you have 371 pressure points on the body. Right. That we push to activate certain, make a, a synopsis to a, a reflex arc, and then to make the body do what it shouldn't be doing involuntarily, which gives you a reaction. Then we follow it up with a, tech, a, a lock or a takedown or whatever. I remember I came to your class once. Um, I came with Joe Penny. That's correct. And I, I said, do I have to unlearn everything I did in the room? And you said, no, you just add to it. Because many people say, all oh, wrestling's fake. It's not fake. There's a no. predetermined finish. But everything we use in the ring is real. We just use it not to hurt anybody. And so when you've had like 4,000 matches and you're used to working with all these different guys, different sizes, they're coming at you, pretty much know where to go with it. Mm -hmm. But um, adding on what you do, it just gives it another the dimension. I can't see how you guys did all those years without really getting major injuries. I mean, I, am, it's, it's, I mean, I, we could tell you know this guy's been through so much. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This is a perfect example yeah. of, of of a guy that trained his whole life, took care of his health his whole life, but had a high speed life. So yeah. you, you know, you pay the penalty. You pay the penalties. You do. Life. You do. And so, you, you have. What's your main method of, of martial arts that you do? Jiu Jitsu. Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. But then you bring Japanese Jiu Jitsu. There's a difference. Okay. Um, so for, for our audience, Jiu Jitsu from Japan is combat Jiu Jitsu, which was the hand to hand combat that the method of the samurai warrior. After the war, um, Japanese moved to Brazil and taught like the Gracies and made it into a sport acclimated art form, mm -hmm. but they didn't teach the um, the killer blows, the hits, the, the the locks that we use in combative tactics. It is more of a sport, mm -hmm. which now is known as BJJ or you know Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Right, right. Jiu -Jitsu. So everybody will ask you, are you a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy? Or are you a Japanese Jiu Jitsu guy? Well, anybody that knows the history of Jiu Jitsu knows that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is Japanese Jiu Jitsu without certain things in it. Well. But you watch the UFC, for example, or MMA, mm -hmm. and these guys are pretty good in a lot of different facets of what mm -hmm. they do. But it's easy to practice this and, and put it on somebody when they're working with you in a gym. Mm -hmm. But when they're coming at you and you got to grab stuff, you have a lot of resistance. Indeed. So you never know where it's going to come from, and it's a completely different ballgame when that happens, right? Mm -hmm. Like we just talked to my office on the street. When people come on the street with all this violence in the world today, and people getting stabbed and shot, and these people are street tough guys that. Slit your throat in a minute. 
how do you defend yourself something like that? I mean, what you, what you learn is one thing, but when you apply it, does a person forget everything they learn or do they freeze up or what? It's an amazing thing. The human body has a fight or flight or freeze response, mm -hmm. which is our natural response. Mm -hmm. Either we're going to fight, we're going to run, or we freeze like a deer in the headlights. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people who have trained their whole life but never actually been put to the test, like mm -hmm. never actually been in that situation. That's exactly what I meant. They freeze. Oh my, they, you know, all of a sudden, wow, this is for real. Uh, this guy's not, there's no tapping. <laughs> this is a, you know, down and dirty street, no yeah, rules. Yeah. There's no ref, there's, your teacher's not there. There's nobody there to help you. And most likely, somebody will video you going down and put it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. So what do you do? How do you handle that? As a, in a combative situation, the first thing that you're gonna do is steal his mind. You make first contact with the individual. When that first contact is made, it is so brutal that his mind goes offline. Like, what What did I lock into? Oh, my God. Right. Now, um, as we said from combative tactics, when you're doing sports, you know, you got time to tap or something like that. Right. We hit you, which is called an atemi, a vital strike to an opening. And the atemi also creates an opening. But by hitting and by striking and by locking the joints and snapping the joints, it creates the guy into what we call a body. He's mm -hmm. a body now. Now, a lot of times a guy will still be there, he'll be conscious, but he's really not conscious. He's not compatibly effective. He's just a body now. Right. You know, okay. You've already done your damage. Do okay. You? How do you get to get to him to do your damage if he has a knife and he stabs you first? Well, situational awareness is the very first thing that we got to deal with, situational awareness. If you're not paying attention to your surroundings, I mean, you're, you're just asking for trouble, no matter what. If your head's in a phone, earbuds, walking around, not paying attention, reading something, and you're out in public. Anybody that walks around today with their head in their phone or not paying attention with all the violence that's going on in today's world, I mean, you're really just asking for it because that's what guys are looking for. They're watching for those weak people that have no situational awareness. Well, it's a very good point. All my life, I've always been aware of things around me. No matter where I'm, a restaurant, I always check it out, see who's what, what's going on. I'm not looking for trouble, but I'm looking for a situation that may not be nice yes. or kosher, as we might say. And and when you're in markets and you're doing your shopping with your shopping cart and you're walking, people stop in front of you. They're not aware of anything around them. This is the same thing we're talking about. They have no idea you're waiting behind them to move your shopping cart. And those are the people that are victims because they don't know what's going on. They haven't got a clue. Mm -hmm. We had a situation like I just uh, I put a post, somebody asked me, you know, why I got involved with this one particular situation. Mm -hmm. I had been coming out, it's 2.30 in the morning, I'm walking up a street I, and I hear somebody screaming, you know, uh, and it's a female voice and then I hear a male voice screaming over that, uh, vulgarities. So I um, start running up, uh, I listen to it, it gets my attention, I look, I see this guy punch this girl in the face, just lays her down. I'm like, my God, that I, you know, you, when you see it, you almost can't believe it that a guy right. that right. would just lay a girl out like that. Right. So you start running, and I know I'm about 50 yards away from the guy, so I know if I make a noise, he's going to rabbit. I'm going to have to chase this guy three blocks before I get my hands on him. Right. right. So I end up running up, chasing him. I, I run up to him, and just as the girl stands up, she's asking, um, "What did I do? What did, you know? Why did why did you hit me like that? What did I do?" Da, 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 da. And he go and he says, "You know, something like a man doesn't tell a woman anything. You're just a." Um, uh, vulgar. And then he body slams her and she flies and her feet go up in the air and she lands on her back and hits her head on the cement. Now that guy was so full of himself at that moment he thought he was indestructible. Mm -hmm. of course. So I, I get about 10 feet away, I yell to my tough guy, he turns and looks, sticks his chest way out, gives me that giant target, I introduce him to Italian old school Jiu Jitsu. Boom, he sits down, knock the wind out of him. But that's all that needed to be done to that individual. Just knock the wind out of him. Mm -hmm. He's going to sit there and try to breathe. I help the girl up. And as I, there's three guys standing around watching. And I'm, I'm mad at them. Yeah, because they didn't help out. What are you doing? Yeah. So, you know, you have to pay attention. Because if you don't, nobody's going to help you. No, that's right. So now you've taken it to different levels. You're, you're, you're working with the military, you're doing things, you're training. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that for a minute because you told me all kind. Of, I don't know if I can remember all of it. <laughs> so much it was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I was just given a uh, congressional uh, accommodation from uh, Congressman Adam Schiff who, for working with the military and uh, uh, wounded veterans and a great organization called Ride to Recovery, which 
builds these bicycles for wounded veterans that they can't afford it, and then they go and they do these rides and mm -hmm. hand bikes and stuff. Some of these bikes cost up to sixteen thousand dollars. Really? Yeah, they're very, very handmade uh, carbon fiber special bikes. So, doing these uh, things for the military, they they gave me that award, and then by being involved with military. We, see, our tactics are made for military and law enforcement, okay? Yeah. You, you know, you're never gonna see a guy like me in the UFC, ever. It's, no. it's never gonna happen. The minute that we lock horns, I'm gonna get disqualified, or you know what I mean, something bad happens, it's not our thing. That's a complete sport mentality. Right. But for, for combat, we are so appropriate for uh, the Marines and the Army, especially SF, close, you know, small unit tactics, and dealing with, um, the NCOs, we're training the NCOs in the Army to, and then we'll trickle down into the cadre, teaching them jujitsu. Mm -hmm. And what happens is um, the military really appreciates what you do. They completely appreciate when something's for real with no nonsense, one, two, three, and very effective. Mm -hmm. And that's what they need to go into a combat zone. Unfortunately, today, the, the lines are so blurred, like, like, between like when wrestling and people mm -hmm. would say well wrestling's fake really put your hands on a wrestler see what happens to you right um but we just said something you keep it simple one two three and the same thing with wrestling i always felt that the old school style of a few moves here and there that meant something were much better than 15 moves in the ring that meant nothing right and you'll never remember them no you'll remember but you'll never have a chance to use them all right you put them in places where they don't belong but what you're saying if you keep it simple for the man on the street the one two three basic stuff to learn it's easy to remember if you get in 10 things 15 of them won't know well, what do i do here or there right is that mm -hmm. what you're telling me? correct okay correct and, and and any more than three in the street they're not going to use it anyway or three in the military you're not going to use it everything right. has to be like that and uh, uh the next thing is that when you're you're, you're dealing with a mindset of a combatant rather than the mindset of a sportsman. Completely different thing. If you're waiting for the guy to tap out while you're putting him in an arm bar and you're going to tap, his buddy's going to come up and stab you. And that's the real world. Okay? Mm -hmm. One guy holds you, the other guy stabs you. Mm -hmm. hey, there ain't going to be no tapping. There ain't going to be nobody there to help you. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I lost the well, to the initial question. No, but I mean, on the street, how do you handle something like that? You said there's three moves. Uh, someone comes at you with a knife. There are self-defense moves for the knife as well. Yes. Um, if somebody comes at you with a knife, let's say, I would say to you, pick something up, anything. Get something in your hand, right? And what do we do? We go after the guy's hands. Right. A lot of people, you know, oh, I'm going to hit him in the head, I'm going to have a chest, I'm going to hit him here. No, break his hands. Yeah, because the hands very are difficult. The hands are flying around. Yeah, and you can't hold a weapon anymore. If I hit you in the top of the hand, your hand swells, you can't close, close your weapon, you can't hold a weapon, you can't hurt nobody, and you can't choke nobody. Exactly. So then, what are you going to do, hold it with your foot? Yeah. There's just so much violence today, you know, every time I put the news on somebody's getting shot, you know, at a distance or whatever, and, and innocent people are getting shot, of course you can't do much against a gun when they're running and they're driving by, but um, what you're doing to train these guys is a, is a big deal. Yeah, we're, we're actively training uh, in de-escalation of violence, of a de-escalation of an active shooter scenario for the uh, U.S. Army and the Marines. Basically after that tragedy in Tennessee mm -hmm. where the recruiters got shot, mm -hmm. and then it, it, now it's become, uh, you know, a, a duplicate thing that people come in and they figure, because these guys aren't unarmed and they want to make a statement, they just come in and, you know, kill as many people as they can. Crazy, crazy. So they've asked us to blueprint an active shooter response to that, which we're in the middle of doing now. Okay, now you've got something else coming on that's going to be released soon. Okay, uh, let's talk about that. I have a new show. I'm in development with the Outdoor Channel, and uh, the show's called Call Vinny, and it's a groundbreaking show, uh, first time ever for the kind of martial arts and training and things that we're attempting. And I think that it will be very eye-opening to people who don't know the difference between combative tactics, sports tactics. It will be extremely eye-opening. You know, when you told me this, I didn't ever think about it, but you're absolutely right. Combative tactics and sport tactics. When you're doing a sports, you have a referee, you have people at the table. Combative on the street, no one's going to come and break your hold up. No. That's not going to happen. And it, um, it's a good thing to know. Now, you've, uh, you've done other movies. Yes. You did some, some movies where they all have fighting in them? Not that much that I had fighting in them because, um, you know, that's a small clique of guys, it's mm -hmm. not guys, you know that, mm -hmm. the, the, that get in and do that. And most of like the B movies and stuff where all the fighting films have been done, I don't, I never did like B movies. I yeah. always did, 
you know, I did low budget, but I never did like the B martial arts films or yeah. anything like that. Well, there's a ton on Netflix. Because yeah. while I was sick, someone gave me Netflix and I'm putting on movies at night, and every one I put on was either in a different language and it was all subtitles. And I'm trying just to listen and go to sleep, but it's not English. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> but there was a ton of fight movies. My God, I've never seen so many. Yeah. And they, I, I got to tell you, overseas, they do the best fight movies in the world. Those guys, they've been doing it for so long. Yeah. I mean, you see these guys, the way that they do their scenes, it's insane. I mean, you know, they could make nine more hip mans. We'd watch it. Oh yeah, that's fun to do. Yeah, and and so your weight training still plays a part in your life. Absolutely. I'm, now I'm concerned more than bulking up and being powerful to be shredded and lean and tight and fast. And yeah, you know, after six years of being hurt, like you feel, you understand. You know, I was yeah. hurt for six years. I had to put the body back together as well. So now uh, being big is not conducive to what we're trying to do. Now, when you when you say you want to be lean, how do you train compared to how you used to train? Uh, right now, I'm using a total gym consistently all the time, and I got more. I, I go in and use the steel maybe one day a week now, mm -hmm. and most of the time I'll use a total gym. You do more reps? A lot of reps. Uh, actually, you know what I do? When I get on the machine, I'll do 45 minutes without stopping. Mm -hmm. You just get on it, and you go, you, you train till failure, switch. Train till failure, switch. Push exercise, pull exercise, bicep exercise, tricep exercise, just constantly switch until you can't move anymore than you Well, done. that's what I did. I did back and some arms. That's why I'm so tired right now. <laughs> you know, I'm just coming back off this illness and, and I'm doing good and, and I can train, but when I'm done, I'm like this. I just want to go <sighs> fall asleep. My body wants to uh, recover. But uh, as far as your diet, did you switch your diet around? Um, my wife pretty much takes care of my diet pretty good. She keeps me dialed in, and you know, like we talked about before, she's got me. She's gotten me from eating. Listen, I'm Italian from the Bronx. I mean, uh, I'm used to eating pastas and desserts, and coffee. I could drink nine pots of espresso and go right to sleep. I mean, that's my thing. Now, that stuff doesn't keep me awake at all. <laughs> no. Ice tea, ice tea keeps me awake. So. <laughs> but you know, she she makes sure that everything that we eat is quality. Everything that she prepares is is the proper material, the proper food that should be in there. You know, she's very con uh, conscientious. Of the carbs and you know the the the, the breads and uh, you know making sure that it's whole grain and yeah those things that's important natural food is supposed to be really important you know we did it for you people out there Vinny and I did a, a walk through Venice one day remember we took yeah, the camera I love and it. I showed them all the old parts of Venice what we used to do where we used to hang out and it's on my YouTube so you guys might want to click on it it's, it's a fun it was a fun time it was great great you got to definitely check that out it was it fun. was just so impromptu to say take the camera let's just go take a walk and Oscar Oscar was with us yeah that's right yeah that's right. So what's your plans for the future other than the new show? Because that's a big deal. Well, I just, uh, I was saying to you earlier, I'm, I'm going to mention it. I'm yes. not supposed to mention it. I'm, I've been nominated for the Patriot Award, uh, which is the highest award that a civilian can attain uh, from the U.S. government. It's awesome. And um, they told me I was nominated, and I'll let you know. And you see where it goes from there? Yeah. Okay, if people want to reach you on the Internet, how can they reach you? Uh, Vince Siri on Facebook. Uh, Yo Vinny C on Twitter. Okay. And uh, I have a, a site, AOSJ Jiu Jitsu, American Old School Jiu Jitsu, which is my method now. And uh, that is also on Facebook page. Okay. I'll put those links up so they can see them. And yeah. you have pictures I can insert from some of the stuff you've done, of course, right? Sure, sure. And some of the, and again, the things that we put, the reason that we uh, came up with the AOSJ and went out and branched out onto my own, like all masters generally do, you know, they go up and then yeah. they, they branch out, is, um, you know, there's a, there's a, there's no room for these, for kata, 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 when you're doing combative tactics. I mean, kata is good for practicing, it's called forms or kata, it's good for practicing to you to go through your repertoire, but here's the thing, muscle memory. Yeah. When you have muscle memory in a particular attack, and every time you start to move, because you've done that kata for 12 years so many times, all of a sudden the guy throws a punch at you and you start moving in the way that that kata, your brain goes back to that original programming, the default. Mm -hmm. and it's the default, have, exactly. Yeah, you have one chance of being right, 99% chance of being wrong. Right. And then when I when I would have this discussion with many, now I, I have this, I, I, rustle, I ruffle feathers, okay, in the martial arts. I understand. I'm very well aware of it. And I am very well aware I will ruffle a lot more feathers because I don't just take something somebody hands me and says, this is great, take it. No, I'm going to pull it apart. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to examine it. I'm going to test it. And if it doesn't work, I'm throwing it out. That's how we do it. Yeah, exactly. And if it's if it has value or use, I'll take it any tact. I don't care. It, it could be from kung fu. It could be from karate. It could be from uh, or ke uh, 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 kempo, which are the hands of jiu-jitsu. If I see a tactic that works that can complement a particular 
uh, assault that we're doing and it works, I add it in. And that's how we do it, improvisational combat. That makes total sense. We do the same thing in the ring. Just add something that will go with something else and it makes it work even better. And the reason I have Vinny on because he was an old school bodybuilder, he goes way back, he knows the old school really, really well. And I thought talking about this stuff with combat and, and jiu jitsu and all that would be something we should talk about today with the world violence the way it is. And we're on the street with our girlfriends and things are happening. You gotta know how to take care of yourself. You really gotta know, otherwise, you're gonna be dead meat in the street. And I don't wanna see that happen to any of you. So that's why we have this subject today. I think it's important to talk about. You know, you asked earlier, what do you do if a guy comes with a knife or a gun? And I'm gonna tell you, if you're walking with your lady, if, if you're walking, you know, you're, you're walking, you're out, your, your lady's with you somebody attacks you and the, or, or holds you up think about this real carefully yeah. anything that you could give them you could be replaced mm -hmm. except for your life and if you're walking with your lady or your kids or something don't ever try to play a hero and say I'm gonna disarm this guy because you took some classes the, your treasure are your children your family your wife your lady you never put them at risk never right give them what they want go home safe you know, call your credit card company. Just you know, right. fix it. Don't yeah. don't get suckered into because you saw it on TV. Once you're going to try it, you know it'll end up badly for you. Always. Well, thank you for being here, man. Oh, Rick, great I to really see you. I really appreciate it. I'm so glad that you're feeling better. Listen, guys, he's been in the hospital for so long. Uh, we were really worried that we were not going to see Rick anymore. Nah. And uh, he's been in and out, in and out. But Rick is like. Um, Bacteria, it never goes away. It's always around. <laughs> That's a nice analogy. No, you know what it is. It's like we talked, and, and when you have, um, I don't know, when you have the will and you have the mindset, and, and bodybuilding for sure has given me that, um, you just don't let them get the best of you. No. You know, you don't be stupid and make yourself sick again, but you look on the positive side and say, you know what, I can kick this. I'm going to eat good. I'm going to train a little bit. I'm going to rest and it's gonna go away, take my medications going. And finally, I kicked all my medications last week, I have no oxygen anymore, I'm back in the gym, feel pretty darn good. I'm not worried about being big and huge. <laughs> yeah, I've been there, done that. I just wanna be lean like this and sexy. How <laughs> do you like that for an answer? Terrific. I tried Cubitori on him once and then yeah. I, I kept missing. The, yeah, I kept missing I kept missing, I can't do it. That's my defense. Thank you guys for watching Race Corner. We'll see you all next time. Thanks, guys. <laughs>